Hi everyone, I'm Andre with Collective Carpentry and today we're gonna to be taking a look at the McDonald residence. The unique thing about this project is that like so many other businesses, we actually shut down for about a month or so due to COVID. This happened in the middle of the production of this project, but we were still able to get it done on time and shipped to Revelstoke. So without further ado, let's take a look at what went into this project both here at the shop and on site. These two houses were built in Revelstoke, British Columbia. Revelstoke is known for its milder climate with temperatures averaging about 20 degrees over the summer and getting down to about minus six degrees Celsius over the winter. Generally speaking, the majority of our projects are either net zero ready or certified passive houses. But while this project was designed by an experienced passive house certified designer and maintains passive house air tightness, the limited space available requires a thinner wall design to maximize usable floor space, which kind of makes this house sort of a passive house light, certainly for the Revelstoke climate. Typically, our full passive house wall panels consist of a 2x6 open structural wall with an integrated exterior insulated cavity of 9.5 inches with an approximate R value of about 54. These particular walls maintain the 2x6 framing but they are pre-insulated with rock wool R22 bats and sheathed with a continuous layer of 60 millimeter thick wood fiberboard, giving this wall an approximate R value of about 32. The wood fiberboard provides thermally broken continuous insulation, which contributes to a more energy efficient and comfortable environment. This can also be achieved with mineral wool, foam, or other materials, but wood fiberboard is among the most sustainable options for this application. When you combine the wood fiber board with the rock wool insulation inside the cavities in this project, we are ending up with a nominal R value of about R32 and an effective value of about R26. Once the panels show up to site, the floor can be installed as well as some air sealing details. We use a small section of Proclimus Intello Plus wrap to bring the air tightness from the foundation around the floors to the walls sheathing. This is repeated for the upper level as well. The walls are then flown into place and the building is starting to take shape. Each wall is essentially built as its own separate airtight unit and after each panel is secured in place, the seam is then taped on the interior for air sealing. The exterior of each panel is also taped resulting in a continuous weather barrier as well as a bit of air sealing redundancy. While the two buildings are remarkably similar, the only significant difference between the two houses is in the style of the roof. One of these houses has the site installed trusses flown in with the airtight materials and detailing done on site. The other house is more of our typical roof build up, consisting of a single pitched roof that is built and insulated at the shop. These panels are framed out of 16 inch eye joists and insulated with cellulose at our shop. Once the walls are completed, the insulated roof is flown up in sections and fastened to the walls. After the roof is installed, an additional 2x4 framed exo layer is installed for venting as well as defining the roof's shape. Now that all the panels are in place and fastened down, the house is ready for the remaining structural, air sealing, and exterior weather barrier details. And once that's complete, it's hashtag taillights and on to the next project. 